What's up everyone, back here for another video. So if this is your first time on the channel, hi, my name is Alex Temes. I've been day trading for 10 and a half years and I made over $8.7 million trading and we'll pop it up on the screen right now. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how much money you need in order to get started in the market. So after 10 and a half years trading, there's a couple things that I wish I did a little bit differently. So I hope this video helps you. So I'm gonna start at the very, very beginning. 10 and a half years ago, I was a barista at Starbucks making coffee. I was making about $150 a week working part-time after taxes. I would take $50 of that $150 and put it into my gas tank because gas was expensive at the time and the rest of the money I would use to take my girlfriend at the time to the movies. Now, fast forward a little bit, she broke up with me to be with a rich guy and I vowed to myself that I would get rich to get back at her and that's exactly what I did. At the time, I looked up the two fastest ways to get rich in America. There was real estate and the stock market. Real estate had a large barrier to entry, which means you need a lot of money to get started. But with the stock market, you could open up an account with as little as $500, so that's exactly what I did. I just kept losing money and losing money and losing money. Every single time I bought a stock, it would go straight down. I finally discovered something called short selling, which is making money when stocks go down. So I gave myself one last chance. I sold the rims off my car for $2,000 to fund my last trading account, and 10 years later, here we are, $8.7 million richer. Here's what I would do differently if I got started again. So number one is I would start by starting with zero. Now what do I mean by that? That means that I would start by paper trading, demo trading, simulated trading. The reason why is because if you can't be profitable on paper, how the heck do you expect yourself to be profitable with real money? When I started, I just opened an account and lost money and lost money and lost money. I wish I never did that. I wish I first started by paper trading, by proving that I could be consistent and profitable on paper first, and then depositing into my account. Now, the thing about paper trading is it does not have the emotional connection to losing money of a real account. So I don't suggest paper trading for longer than one or two months. The goal of paper trading is to be able to prove to yourself that you could show up with a strategy that's repeatable and show up and consistently make money in the market. If you prove that you are a consistently profitable trader on demo trading and paper trading, congrats, you passed level one, right? There's three levels to this game. Level one, level two, and level three. So now that you started and you are consistent on paper, you have proven to yourself that time in and time out, you could win more than what you lose in the stock market, it's time to move up to level two. Level two means funding your account with whatever the account minimum is for the brokerage. So for example, if the account minimum is $500, I want you to deposit only $500. But Alex, how the hell am I gonna make money with $500? The point of level two is not to make crazy money yet. The point of level two is to transition you from paper trading to real trading. Because when you transition to real trading, you have the emotional aspect of losing money that comes into play. When you're simulated trading, you don't have that feeling of losing money. Your heart doesn't race, you don't start sweating. You're like, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. You don't treat it real. So what I want you to do is open up an account with as little as possible, expecting to fully lose that money. The reason why you're gonna lose that money is something called market tuition. The transition over from paper trading to live trading, although you're very, very consistent on paper, when live trading comes into play and emotions come into play, it's a totally different ball game. So I want you to open up an account with as little as possible, fully expecting to lose it. So you don't need to open up a 10, 20, 30, $100,000 account at level two. At level two, you open up the smallest account possible to understand what it's like to have emotions in a trade because that is very, very important in trading. In trading, we are not physical athletes, we are mental athletes and you're gonna learn that at level two. All right, now that you've been consistent with that small account, you have proven that you've taken everything you've learned from paper trading, applied it into real life trading and slowly and consistently made money, now you could go to level three, which is a much larger deposit into your account. Keep in mind that there is a pattern day trader rule of $25,000. If you don't know what the pattern day trader rule means, it pretty much means that you could only place three trades in a five day rolling period if your account is under $25,000. So depending on how much money you have and what you wanna do after you pass level two, level three comes to depositing whatever you want to be a real live trader. For me, I would suggest over $25,000 
That way you don't have to follow the pattern day trader rule and trade as much times as you want. So now that you're at level three, here's a couple important things that you have to do to make sure that you don't demote yourself back to level two or level one, right, with losses. Number one is setting a max size per position with your broker. When I first got started, I didn't know that you should be setting max size and max loss parameters at your brokerage. It took me to lose money and lose money and lose money because the worst thing that you could do is oversize in your trades, get in a little bit too big on your trades, and end up losing money because the range is so expanded. So when you're at level three, I suggest starting by setting yourself with a 1,000 share max size. If you are consistent for a week with that 1,000 shares, raise it to whatever you want. This is just another seatbelt, another airbag to protect you in your trading from getting too large. The next thing I wish someone told me about was a max loss auto liquidation at the brokerage level. This means that if you hit a certain loss, the broker is automatically going to liquidate you. Why is this important? It's important because when you're losing in a trade, chances are you're gonna turn into a deer in headlights. You are going to freeze and not know what to do and the loss is gonna balloon and balloon and balloon. It's happened to me countless amount of times, so now I use a max loss auto liquidation. Now, what should you set that number to? So for example, if you show up every day and you make $100 a day trading, I want you to set your max loss auto liquidation to no more than two days worth of your trading. So in this example, it would be $200. The reason why is because if you are on tilt and on your worst day possible, if you're only losing two days worth of trading, you're gonna make it back in two days. What I see people doing is setting these ridiculous stop loss numbers. People are making $100 a day and they're setting their max loss auto liquidation at $2,000. 20 days of work, it makes no sense guys, it makes no sense. You don't wanna blow up your account and take a month to make it back. For me, I have my max loss auto liquidation around twenty to $30,000 because I make about ten dollars to $15,000 a day, right? So that's what you need in order to stay at level three because what's gonna happen is if you blow up and lose money, you're gonna have to demote yourself back to level two and build back. It doesn't make sense. So you need to understand that the proper way to fund your account is based on what level you are, right? And then there's something called level four. Level four is after you are consistent and after you're making money nonstop and you've proven that with your larger account you could stick to your rules, stick to your stops, stick to everything and make consistent money, then level four is taking that money and diversifying it outside the market. So for me, whatever money I make from trading, I don't like to keep more than just a nest egg in the bank because I'm losing money every single day to inflation. What I do is I take some of those profits and I invest it into long-term stocks. 95% of hedge funds cannot beat the S&P 500. So I just take my money and throw it into the S&P 500 and build long-term wealth and collect dividends so I'm making money while I am asleep. So there's a certain progression, a leveling up process to be able to go from level one to level four. And by the time you're at level four, level five is retirement, baby. You retire, you enjoy your life, and you collect your money, right? So just to recap this video, level one is starting off paper trading with zero. Level two is funding your account with as little money as possible. Level three is funding with whatever you feel comfortable, but setting your max size and max loss. If you do not set your max size and max loss, you will blow up. Level four is taking some of that consistent money putting a nest egg in your bank account and investing it elsewhere. And level five is enjoying the day, man. So this is what I wish I could go back and tell myself 10 years ago, because had I done this and started off paper trading, I would have saved thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in losses. I hear people all the time starting with 10, 20, 30,000, blowing it up and blowing it up and blowing it up while they learn when they should have just been paper trading in the first place. So I hope this video helps you guys. Please leave a like, please leave a comment, and let me know what you wish you would go back and do if you were back at the start of your trading journey. I'm also gonna include some live trading videos here so you can watch me trade live. I'm also gonna include some past videos and leave a comment with what you wanna see on the next video. See you then, guys.